in their refusal of black, of black, what, what is this? I'm okay now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, while criticizing the U.S. and French revolutions, misogynist refusal of active citizenship to women, Zabaka and presumably Sanse enact a racism embedded in their refusal of black lovers. However, Leonor Sanse wrote too close to her own country's struggle for national liberation from British and colonialism to endorse the right of France to reconquer saint domain As a European-American woman, however, she could easily embrace racism as a way to underscore the legitimacy of Zelika's determination to refuse her father's patriarchal right to transfer his control of, his, of her body to the man of his choice. Most significantly, most significantly on Sansei's pages, that attempt is represented in political terms. The enthusiast for liberty is revealed as despotic in relation to women. And can we read this as Sansei's protest against women's exclusion from the social contract, not only in Haiti, but in the United States and France? But a final criti critical question remains. Why did Sansei make Zelika a quadruple. Would not Zelika's enforced marriage to Cristo be even more shocking with Zelika like Clara, unambiguously white? Reading Zelika against the novel's depiction of Clara's America may offer a further clue to the book's many riddles. Clara's America, you may recall, is represented as a country where personal liberty is sacred and all the rights of man respected. Most obviously, this representation of America obscures the denial of suffrage both to white women and to a large body of enslaved African Americans resident in the United States, whose personal as well as political liberty is not sacred and whose economic and sexual rights are not respected. Enslaved blacks are as effaced from Clara's representation of America as Zelika's black blood is effaced by her fair skin. Furthermore, as enslaved African Americans inspired hatred, fear, and revulsion among white Americans, so Zelika, as we noted, reports hating the very sight of blacks in Haiti. But the second analogy causes us to pause. It positions Zelika in relation to blacks as white Americans are positioned. This is, a forceful, is this a forceful assertion of sameness? Was Sansei boldly asserting that Zelika the Quadroon was just like white Americans, just like Clara? Certainly Zelika's hatred of blacks and her refusal to marry a black man suggest strong similarities. But Zelika and Quadroon is not quite white and therefore not quite a white American. However, might she not stand, even more importantly, for America itself? Fusing black and white and refusing to admit that fusion, does Zelka embody America in its racial and ideological complexities? But what if we were to go further with this train of thought? Is it possible that Zelka unintentionally, of course, raises a further possibility? That were the United States to position its history in multiple diverse yet coexisting identities at the center of its national identity rather than this false claim to whiteness. Um, uh, to celebrate its real diversity would it begin to approximate Elia Bolivar's dream of democratizing democracy? Would it indeed be an impossible dream? If Zelika, like white America, refuses her own blackness, Justine Sinat, the ultimate liberated white Creole in the novel, refuses to acknowledge Zelika's whiteness. Delighted that De La Riviera insists that Zelika marry Christophe, Madame Sinat predicts the enchantress will only return to her native color, which all the water of the ocean would not wash out of her veins. But Madame Sennat is wrong. The novels, at the novel's end, seeking to escape the embrace of Christo, Zelika leaps into the ocean where she is rescued by her white Republican French lover, who carries her as his white bride to a bride 
to America and freedom. <laughs> there together, the gray white soldier as virtuous Republican and the gray white Jew as his white lady will quite literally embed and body future Americans. The Sansei Enya novel by inscribing the cosmic cosmopolitan vision of a racially mixed society, possibly even linking difference and rights, the novel's opening suggestion. With all its twists and turns, the novel forces us to ask, does racial mixture lead inevitably to ideologically mixed messages and multiple new possibilities? I'm going to ask that someone continue to read this.